Ladies and gentlemen, children of the interwebs out there, Sebastian Envy, Strong Style, Cinephile. So, He-Man, well, Masters of the Universe Revelation Part 2. Let's geek about it for a scant few minutes. I mean, it's simple. If you enjoyed the first part and what some of the things that were going on with the first part, you're gonna like the second part. If you were upset about some of the things that happened in the first part, namely He-Man being taken out super early, sees a little bit of Adam, and then you see Adam get stabbed in the last episode of the first part, and the focus on Tila, as far as the story goes, then you're not gonna be happy with part two. It's pretty simple. I have not watched the more kitty uh, oriented version of He-Man. I just didn't like the character designs and just the way they were spinning the narrative in that. I'll probably check it out at some point just because I like He-Man, so I'll probably give it a whirl at some point. But that's not for me. You get more He-Man there. So people who are complaining about He-Man, I guess they can go there for more He-Man. Here again was a continuation of this story. Uh, Skeletor has the power and um, He-Man is seemingly taken out of the picture. We don't know what's gonna happen. Eternia falls into chaos, darkness, et cetera, et cetera, is kind of steering that way with the lack of magic. It's a little bit worse because Skeletor's in charge. And it, we get into sort of uh, themes of, of power and wielding power and kind of what made Adam so special not just because he was He-Man, because he had all that power and he willingly gave it back. That was highlighted many times throughout the final five episodes that he was just this powerful god-like being in his own right and he would give, it, give, give the power back. He didn't want it for himself. He wanted to use it to help other people and he'd give it back. That was something Skeletor tried to understand and just how the, the power still answers him, even though Skeletor had the sword. And of course we saw the Savage He-Man in the trailer. Savage He-Man is present in this where he still can call upon the power. It's just not filtered through the sword, the power sword, sword of power. Um, so he becomes that rampaging beast for a little bit of time. And then he gets reunited with his father, King Randor, which kind of snaps him out of it. So the second part, like I said, was dealing with themes of power. Um, continue the journey of Tila to kind of circle back around to not, I mean, she was anti-magic before, now she's kind of embracing the magic and her destiny and what it means for her, the fact she's a child of the sorceress and needed to call upon that power to help save Eternia from the larger threat, which turns out to be Eva Lynn, who gets tired of being under the, the thumb of Skeletor and the fact that she becomes the sorceress and the, the, the power of the champion, in this case, you know, Skeletor, since he's wielding the power, is given to him by the sorceress. So she finally realizes she's the one in control. She has the power. So she can finally turn the tables on Skeletor, who we find out through a flashback of how they met. And the fact that she's hated him f since that first day, basically, and is able to turn the tables on him and then become the larger threat. I said in... Um, I posted on Facebook, comment about it, that to me, the star, if you take into account all 10 episodes of this, part one and part two, the star of this uh, is actually Eva Lynn. Some people would say Tila. I think it's Eva Lynn with how her narrative goes and just her importance to the overall story um, and her development and just everything that we, it was just a fully fleshed out, just spin on Eva Lynn that I was not expecting um, on the outset. And, and, the latter episodes of the first part, you can kind of see it going in that direction, but it really takes a hold in the second part. I'm not complaining about it. It's different. I'm not complaining about it. It was executed well, I think, and you really kind of get to know Evelyn, maybe sympathize with her a little bit and kind of see what drives her to do what she does in this second part. So I'm okay with that. Tila is a close second as far as like story focus. After that, you get like Adam slash He-Man. And then basically everybody else wrapped it in Eternia. The other masters of the universe, King Randor, um, the queen, etc. cetera. Um, in this second part, there was some hasty sort of uh, catch up work to be done with everybody else, kind of see where they're at. And then you had to have some resolutions, people coming back together, people uniting for this final battle. So some things were kind of rushed, which was more than 10 episodes in, in, in total. Um, in certain cases, some cases, not, there's some padding here and there, but some people kind of wanted to see some masters in the first part. You get a few more masters in this part, like uh, 
Clamp Champ and Fisto and Ram Man who show up for like the blink of an eye, Ram Man does. You get more from Clamp Champ and Fisto, but what happens to them and how they get taken off the board is probably gonna rub some people the wrong way. I mean, people are gonna be mad regardless. Like I said, people, if, I mean, if you were mad about the, on the outset about He-Man, you're still gonna be mad for this. I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the story that they told had some issues with it when they tried to go a little bit too existential with, with the ideas of power and the universe and its purpose and chaos and the fact that there's suffering and death in life and the ultimate futility of life on some levels. It just, it tried to go places, and I know this is the adult kind of version or it's geared towards an older audience, but they just kind of tried to just punch above their weight class for what I want with He-Man, you know? Just a little bit in those regards. Um, we had some lengthy monologuing in this, which kind of took away from, from it. Again, that's part of the padding problem I see, but overall, if you're into the first part, you will like the second part, I think. I was, so I enjoyed it. Could I have done with more He-Man? Sure. But um, I was happy with the story that I accepted, the story that they told, and just period. You know, they could have done this, they could have done that. I can nitpick this, that, and I, there's a lot of stuff I can nitpick. I still hate the voice acting of Sarah Michelle Gellar's Tila, hate it. But for what they gave us with this show, I'm happy with it. We got a tease for Hordak at the end, which was awesome. I was kind of wondering if we were gonna go that far, like in the closing like eight minutes of it, I was kind of wondering if we were gonna get that like tease of Hordak, and we did. But will there be a second season to give us Hordak? remains to be seen, but overall, like I said, I enjoyed it. If you were pissed off about it from jump, you're still gonna be pissed off about it. It's, it's just plain and simple. So anyway, those are my thoughts on it. Scattered as they often are, but guys out there think, let me know in the comments below. Follow me, social media. We got some more Flash to talk about, Armageddon, and possibly a disappointment there in the second episode. And then got two episodes of Hawkeye to get to, so I'm excited for that. Anyway, until next time, let us geek.